any customer interaction we expect bad. So I don't need you guys to be awesome. I need you to be a few levels above bad. That's what we're going to talk about. And you think I'm, you laugh. A few levels above bad beats 99% of every single one of your competitors out there. Because we expect so little in any customer interaction. So long story short, I left AOL. I moved back to New York. It was the summer of 98. Um, I had no money. I was living in a studio apartment roughly the size of, like, you. And <laughs> there was a movie coming out on video that you may have heard of. Uh, it didn't do that well at the box office. It was an independent film. It was called Titanic. And everywhere you looked, <laughs> there were signs that said, buy Titanic on video. Buy Titanic on video. Get it here. I figured, okay. There have to be people that hate that movie as much as I did. So I took my rent money. I had 500 t-shirts printed up. And the t-shirts read, it sank. Get over it. I figured if I could go into Times Square and sell 180 shirts at 10 bucks a piece, I'd make my rent money back. Less than that, I was homeless. I wasn't homeless so much as had to move back in with my Jewish New York City parents. I'd, that, you'd rather be homeless. So <laughs> I figured it would take a week to sell 180 shirts. I sold 500 shirts in six hours in Times Square. Came home, threw $5,000 up in the air, rolled around it naked. You'll never get that image out of your head. I, <laughs> called a reporter I knew at USA Today. I said, you just did something really funny. I thought you could get out of it. She said, oh my god, that's hysterical. Are you selling the shirts online? I went, of course I am. That's why I called you. <laughs> Duh. This was 1998. There was no Cafe Press. There was no WordPress. There was no Teespring. There was Peter and his craptastic HTMLs. Buy shirt. Click here. You'd click to send me an email that you wanted a shirt. I would email you my snail mail address to which you would mail me a check. For those old enough to appreciate this reference, I built the Rube Goldberg fulfillment process. And the reporter said, OK, great, we'll see what we can do. And I immediately forgot about it, because as, as, was, as Charles mentioned, I have massive ADHD. Uh, I actually run the number one podcast uh, on iTunes about using ADHD as a gift. It's called Faster Than Normal. And uh, we interview CEOs and celebrities who have ADHD and have used it to their advantage. So if you have ADHD or know someone with it, I encourage you to check it out. It's actually a gift, not a curse. But I immediately forgot about the reporter uh, saying, we'll see what we can do, because you know, AD actually, it's called ADOS, which is attention deficit. Oh, shiny. So. <laughs> Immediately forgot about it, fell asleep, woke up the next morning, 5.30 to my phone ringing. It was the hosting provider of my website. Mr. Shankman, sorry to call you so early. Have you started advertising? No, it's 5.30 in the morning. Why are you calling me? Sir, tell me you get about 100 visitors to your website every day. Most of them are you. Great, thanks. You've had over 37,000 unique visitors in the past two hours. Uh, you've crashed our first, second, and third primary servers. You're about to take down our fourth, fifth, and sixth. We only have seven. We'd love to know what's up. Story ran on the front page of USA Today, listed the website, hung up from them. It was the Today Show, hung up from them. It was People Magazine, hung up from them. It was Entertainment Weekly. It was the Howard Stern Show. I sold a little over 10,000 shirts in two months, cleared about 100 grand, um, started my first PR firm. Story from that, lesson from that. Um, if I tried to do that today, I'd go out with my T-shirts in Times Square, and within five seconds, some idiot with a camera phone would take a picture, and there'd be 10 different websites selling my shirt and my idea. So what does that mean? That means that if you guys are just a little bit better than normal, and you can improve, then everything you need to do has to be branded back to you. You have to tie it back into what you do. Because if people think that they had, if people had amazing service and they don't remember who gave it to them, how does that help you? Okay, sure, it's wonderful to give tremendous service, but you know what a nice bonus would be? For people to say, oh my God, that was great service, let me go back to your company name right here, and let me recommend your company name to all your friends. And why is that important? Because as we'll talk about a little later, the future is no longer about Yelp. It's not about TripAdvisor. It's about the experiences we have every day automatically directing the people in our network to those experiences, good, and not to those experiences if they're bad. So the concept of branding everything you do is massive. 